Hi, I'm David. I'm in the product management team of DQ. I like riding bikes a lot and we hope to build good product for you in the future. The biggest and my question is uh, for you, uh, why the queue started with e-bikes? Because the main idea was that we actually can do these things, meaning that we have a high power density when it comes to components, when it comes to uh, super strong motors, mm -hmm. and basically we have the same, the same structure and the same component in here. So the main idea was to transfer the knowledge which we already have in these mm -hmm. components into a new, a new application, meaning we started with uh, the HPR120 that was in 2013. Mm -hmm. So um, the idea was to build a motor which is super efficient, which is um, super powerful as well. And that was the HPR120. So we had 120 Newton meters of torque, it was super strong, super powerful, but also when it comes to this amount of power, still very small. Mm -hmm. um, and we had good success with this component. We had uh, we made a lot of experience when it comes to how this component behaves, how the component should be in terms of application. Um, and then a, a, a product manager of ours, Danny, came up with the idea to actually um, scale it down. So the idea was not to make it bigger, to make it stronger, mm -hmm. rather than having a smaller motor. And we had like a little coffee cup standing on the table and the idea was to go with this size. Mm -hmm. Everybody just was like laughing at first, but um, luckily our engineers are engineers by heart, so they said, mm -hmm. hey, that's actually a challenge, let's do it. Yeah, they, they were the bikers size. at this time? They're all bikers, okay, yeah. So. Okay. And motocross riders. And motocross riders. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, the first, so the first intention was, why do you want to have less torque, less power? Mm -hmm. um, but like I said before, these guys are engineers by heart, so they want to do things, they want to achieve things. Um, then we, uh, they came up with the idea of making it super small and super powerful when it comes to power density. Mm -hmm. And that's actually the idea behind this motor, um, because we all are riders as well. So the idea was not to increase power, to increase torque, because that's something we can do, we are capable mm -hmm. of. The idea was rather than make it a smaller and use actually a new field of application, meaning the, um, a light debate assist. Um, that's the whole idea. In the same in the same movement in 2013, we came up with the HBR technology, means mm -hmm. um, harmonic pin ring, and the entire idea was to um, to make the transmission between the rider mm -hmm. RPM and the, um, and the motor RPM within one axle. So you, you maybe know um, you may be no transmission hubs, so, so where you have mm -hmm. planetary gears for instance, but you have to have several axes for this. And the idea was to have the transmission on one axis. So that allowed us to build a very small motor where you have the transmission on only this axis which allowed us to have the motor to be like super small. And yeah, that was the whole idea behind it. And I think, I think we have great success when it comes to uh, the application of the light e-bikes. We have the highest power density, we have the smallest motor, which is super easy to integrate. And also, and that's something I think which is the, more, uh, the most important thing, we have the natural ride feel. So the motor does not feel like it pushes you up the hill, it pushes you I don't know, some place you don't want to go, it's rather supporting you. So it's like a rather um, supporting system when it comes to, um, you can ride the way you want to ride and the motor is just pushing you a little bit further rather than pushing you somewhere you don't want to go actually. Um, the whole magic behind this is our unique torque, torque measuring system. It's basically this component, you can also see it over there. Um, so we have the spindle which is pushed through here and therefore we can, in terms of um, having many increments when it comes to how the spindle is behaving, so how the rider is putting torque and power into the spindle and that's some, something which allows us to have a very precise, um, a precise measurement when it comes to um, RPM and torque of the rider and 
that's something which is quite unique in our system that we have a very direct motor which is also um, super small and super super, uh, super powerful in its field of application yeah um, to finish up the entire system um, I think it's important to have on the one hand um, a motor which is super small but the idea was to um, actually build a system which is entirely super small and super efficient. So we came up with a 360 watt hour battery which in our opinion is enough to have. Um, also high power density when it comes to different cell types. We have an, um, an AT65 cell which can be seen over here. It's this kind of cell. Um, mm -hmm. So the cells are inside of this battery. We have the same, same cell type in the range extender mm -hmm. and like I said before the whole idea was to build a system which is not visible so to say. So mm -hmm. you want the components to be super small, super um, light as well and I think that we achieved within a, a, the motor, the battery and also the remote and the display. So that was the goal to achieve and I think we came up with some super cool bikes or our OEs came up with super cool bikes which you can see over here so the profile yeah. is super slim um, the integration is very very good and like I said before there are some people who can not realize that you are riding an e-bike because the integration mm -hmm. is very good the profile is, is very slim and also when it comes to noise and um, how the bike behaves, uh, I think there's not much difference between when you're just having a very, very good day mm -hmm. in comparison to that you ride an a, like acoustic bike, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what uh, was the first response from the uh, bike companies? Mm -hmm. You know, you are you are like you know new company from. Nowhere? Okay, from Germany. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, <laughs> you have <laughs> Bosch or Shimano. It's an uh, e bike for German guys, it's a Bosch bike, mm -hmm. usually. And then PQ. And uh, what was the first answer? Um, I think the first touch point was, uh, was with Trek. So mm -hmm. we came up with the HBR 120 to Trek. And we showed them our design from the HBR mm -hmm. 120 and they said it's a super cool design, it's a super cool concept, but um, the main idea would be to scale it down actually. So they give us a little hint in which direction we should like develop yeah. ourselves. Um, I think that was the entry point when it comes to how OEs uh, reacted to our components. And mm -hmm. the first at the first touch points where um, it's a new product, it's a new brand, we actually don't know it, how yeah. it's quality, how are the products and themselves. So um, we got some serious feedback on track um, when it comes to how the product should be, when it comes mm -hmm. to torque, when it comes to quality, and they helped us a lot uh, to develop actually this motor um, to be the component they think would be very good for the market as well as uh, combined with the engineering mm -hmm. knowledge we have within our company. So the first feedback um, was very good and then other brands reacted to our product because I think one of our main advantages is to have a product which is super easy to integrate when it comes mm -hmm. to, uh, I don't know, our competitors. They have some downsides when it comes to integration, when it comes to size, when it comes to where the components should be. And that's something which is very good at our motor and our entire system that you're actually capable of designing the frame you want to have mm -hmm. and just build our system in the bottom bracket. And uh, so also some, some, um, some other touch points when it comes to, to integrating the battery, but that's actually two screw points, so it's not that hard to integrate. Um, yeah, so the first feedback was very good and I think the amount of bikes which are in the market right now speaks for itself. Yeah, and another question. For me, it was really surprising that uh, the engine is uh, it's no noise at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was uh, important from the beginning. They know that this uh, 
actually no sound so it's really I think it's a big difference between the Q and the other motors mm -hmm. um, I think that's something which our IHBR technology also mm -hmm. allows us meaning um, we have a ratio of 17.5 um, so it's a quite low ratio when it mm -hmm. comes to the rotational speed of the okay. rider in terms of or in, in in contrast to the rotational speed of the motor okay so if you have a rotational speed of I don't know 100 rpm from the rider mm -hmm. you have 1750 rpm of the motor mm -hmm. which is relatively low for an e-bike motor okay but that allows us to be super quiet and mm -hmm. also super efficient so there are other competitors who have a um, who have a, um, a slightly higher ratio but that comes with um, with noise transmission or noise emission mm -hmm. so you actually hear the motor is like a flaring noise mm -hmm. and because we are capable of building it very small and also having a ratio of 17.5 allows us to be super quiet and also super small okay I think the big thing now is uh, automatic transmission. Do you mm -hmm. think about it? Yeah, you said us at the beginning about mm -hmm. power matters something, and <laughs> you know, it's logical mm -hmm. step, next step for me. Um, I think I think it's a very cool concept, mm -hmm. but I think as of today, if the motor or if the system does not know that much about the track. Mm -hmm. Um, you will stick with the like manual shifting for a while mm -hmm. because I think when the uh, when the system knows how the track is in terms of um, in terms of climbing in terms of which gear you need at a certain point mm -hmm. when it comes to this situation I think it will be feasible to integrate automatic shifting mm -hmm. but uh, I think as of today um, it's not a good feature for the end user. I mean, it would be possible to be honest. Uh, we have some uh, some concepts up our sleeves, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, like I said, I'm not quite sure if there's a need for this kind of feature. As okay.